We acknowledge the sky, forest and earth, and especially for this advent, the water around us, the seas, rivers, lakes and streams. We pay our respects to the wisdom in caring for country, especially that of our First Nations people, their elders past and present and the honouring of this land as sacred. Bless us each day with clarity of mind and joy of heart. Strengthen us to dare, to question and to act. Heal us all of pain, hunger and conflict. As we pour the water for our Advent wreath, we remember our thirst for joy for ourselves, for our community, for the world. Joy which soaks into us and makes our world stand still like a sudden spring downpour. Joy which makes our soul dance like a waterfall. Joy which becomes the centre of our life with others, such as being with friends. Advent God, we worship you with joy. Well, hello everyone. Uh, first hymn is uh, Together in Song 265, Emmanuel. Now we Kate uh, had this in the service a fortnight ago, and I noticed that this congregation sung it with some gusto. So you have your own standard that you've set for yourself. So stand if you're able. Thank you, Joan.
was a joy to hear. Uh, uh, it certainly sounded very good from up here, so thank you, everybody. And a big welcome to you all as we gather here as one in Curtin, yet also in many places. Hello to the folks in online and on Goodwin. Lovely to see you all. Uh, you may follow the service through the liturgy. Um, as you might have noticed, our focus today is joy. And you're welcome to joyously join us at fellowship at the end of the service. Thank you, Janet. Our first reading today is a blessing from one of our favourite authors, John O'Donoghue. May you recognise in your life the presence, power and light of joy. May you realise you are never alone, that your soul in its brightness and belonging connects you intimately with the rhythm of the universe. May you have respect for your individuality and difference. May you realise the shape of your soul is unique, that you have a special destiny here, that behind the facade of your life there is something beautiful and eternal happening. May you have joy. And now for one of our favourite segments of the service, Passing of the Peace. The peace of God be with you all. And also with you. Please uh, share a sign of peace with each other. I really do love the way this congregation passes the peace. So thank you to everybody. Our next hymn, uh, together in song 100, All Creatures of Earth and Sky. Thank you, Joan.
Our reading from the Hebrew Scriptures comes from Isaiah 61. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. And a reading from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise the words of prophets, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. In these readings, may we hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. When you're preparing for a service, you kind of look for text that leaps out at you. And it almost seems, despite myself, yet again, I'm drawn to the writings of Paul. I just, it's, I find it amazing. Um, I guess because, and I'm sure uh, other people maybe have this memory of the kind of extracted bits of Paul that are forbidding and severe, um, but he's a much more complex figure than that. And to help us uh, have a look at this short extract out of uh, 1 Thessalonians. If you go to the back of your service sheet, you'll see a little extract from the Bible Project, which I th thoroughly recommend. Uh, it's a video, you can watch it on your phone or on your computer. It only goes for, or this bit, only goes for about a little over five minutes. And it gives you an excellent introduction to the structure of this particular Pauline letter. I think the big thing to realise about Paul when we're looking at that text is the context in which Paul wrote and the huge context really about the whole New Testament is the dominance of the Roman Empire at the time, the political dominance which we know only so well in both the Easter and the Christmas story but was a huge context for Paul and his writings as well. Um, so this letter uh, is considered one of his earliest letters that Paul wrote. Um, he'd been in uh, the city of uh, Thessalonica uh, and he'd, run, he'd uh, fled the city because of uh, fearing persecution from the Roman uh, authorities at the time. Um, so that's one big context for Paul's writing. Uh, the other context is that there were many religions in the Roman Empire at the time, and so he was very concerned to make sure that Christianity was a distinct form of religion and didn't, in his, I guess, thoughts, get adulterated by those other uh, religions. So he was very concerned about that. This little uh, extract on, on the end of your service sheet just gives a very quick overview of the letter. 
And the themes, as you can see, um, holiness, love, and future hope. And they seem like pretty good themes to me. And the structure in the two big boxes underneath, the first uh, three chapters, Paul's celebrating the faithfulness of the community in Thessalonica, but he's also giving a challenge to grow in the, in the latter part of the letter. So he's both wanting to reassure and encourage, but he's also trying to challenge. And I think that's uh, a pretty good balance to make. So on page four, I'm always, when I, um, when I uh, read something, I always like to know where things are. So there's a little map there, which hopefully you can see it. Sorry for the small print. I can just manage it with my glasses. But you can see the city there, uh, Thessalonica, in the centre. Uh, an ancient city. Um, important in the Roman and the Byzantine and the Ottoman empires. It's in modern day Greece. But it has a, a very rich and long history. And so if you can imagine there's a small, budding, growing Christian community there that Paul is worried about, but he got reassured from reports uh, by Timothy, apparently, that things were going not only okay, but were going well for the community. But still, he wanted to celebrate with them their success, and he wanted to challenge them a bit too. So if you go to, back to page three of your reading and have a look at the text that Janet read at the, at the bottom there, I think we could, I mean, what, there's only a few verses there, and really we could talk about this for a long time, but three things really leapt out at me. And the first is, rejoice always, 516. 519, do not quench the spirit. 518, give thanks. So we have a very happy rejoicing Paul here. I think, oh, that's not my kind of image of Paul that I have from, you know, decades ago. Um, but I'm very rejoicing, concerned to get people to celebrate, to rejoice, to be, to be happy with their success. The second thing that really leapt out to me was uh, 521 and 522. Hold fast to what is good, Abstain from every form of evil. So look, this is Paul after all. He's got to have a bit of serious um, text there. And when I think about um, Paul's uh, direction, injunction, encouragement to hold fast to what is good and abstain from every form of evil, yes. Uh, but as we've talked about before in previous sermons, Sometimes we're faced with hard choices. Sometimes doing the good thing can be a really hard thing to do. Sometimes you can only choose the lesser of two evils. And some people have more choice than others. Some people are better able and are structurally in a position where they can make the right choice. And there's debate over what is good and what is bad. So, ah, I'm Certainly there are some things where we can be very clear on, but sometimes on some things there can be room for debate and question. And even with all those things, though, I still think these words are still something that we can strive for, recognising all the difficulties and all the qualifications and all the complexity as part of the human condition, really. Hold fast to what is good and abstain from every form of evil as something to strive for, I think that is a good thing. And I've saved my favourite bit of text to the end. The thing that leapt out at me, 5.20 and 5.21, do not despise the words of the prophets, but test everything. And I thought, oh. I, that I, find, I found that a really interesting and... Um, yet difficult 
thing to kind of think through. And I did a bit of reading and uh, there's different interpretations about what is meant by do not despise the words of prophets. And so maybe there's room for us to have a bit of a think about that. The way I think about it for us today might be don't despise tradition but be open to new ideas, be open to science. So we need somehow to balance both. Somehow we need to get that balance right between those two things. Maybe it could mean don't despise the Old Testament and the Hebrew Scriptures and all the tradition that led up to um, the formation of the uh, Christian community. But also go for the new. So somehow there's a kind of mix and, and marriage and a balance between those two things. But I love testing everything, so I love to see complexity wherever I can and ambiguity, I'll, I love that. So, And yeah, yeah, I'm surprised to see that with Paul. But it's a good surprise and, and I love to be challenged. One thing that I've been thinking about and I'm sure that we're all thinking about at this time of year time of Advent, we've got Christmas in a little over a week and the theme of joy and I'm sure I'm not the only one in the room who's, who thinks, who has mixed emotions at this time of year. For some people it is a very difficult time of year and to be told that you should be joyous when really you don't feel like that at all is a very difficult thing. I think We've got to think about joy, not just joy by itself. I mean, Paul's giving us a huge hint here. Yes, he's saying rejoice, but he's saying lots of other things as well. So you don't just have joy by itself. There's serious things in life. There are bad things going on in the world. There's wars on. There's difficult situations. Yet in amongst that, we need to find the right balance between rejoicing for the good, but facing up and being real realistic about the difficult things in life as well. I think I'll leave it there. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Joan. We now move to the offering. Thank you. Thank you, Alison. Colin.
There are many gifts for which we are thankful today, for friendship and food, for music and sound and broadcasting, for reading and prayers, for joy. We give thanks for our monetary gifts through our collection plate or electronically. And thank you to all here today by being here and participating. Thank you. Now for the prayers of the people, I was thinking about how we could do this and I happened to be uh, awake at 2am as sometimes that happens. And I heard a really interesting broadcast from Tapestry, which is from the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. Um, uh, and Mary Hines was interviewing Malcolm Doney, who's a uh, minister in England, uh, in the Church of England. And he read out these prayers, because if you'll notice uh, in the reading from 1 Thessalonians, in 5.17, Paul says, pray without ceasing. Now, I happen to be a very impatient person, and I think pray, praying without ceasing would be a very difficult thing for me to do. Um, but what I realised after listening to Malcolm Doney is that prayers can be just short prayers. They don't have to be long prayers. And I really liked these, so I thought that we might uh, share this. So, this one's for you, sitting opposite me. Whatever it is you need, let's hope you get it. Let's hope that someone today will send one out for me. Amen. With that last breath and with this next one, for this heart which keeps on beating, even though I never notice, for being here, for being alive, thank you. Amen. Amen. I can't stand this job. There, I've said it. I need to change something. I need to make a new start, maybe today. Please help me. Amen. I shouldn't have said that. Something snapped. I lost it. I sometimes do. He was wrong. But all the same, so was I. Sorry about that. I mean it. Amen. This is me wishing things were different, wishing the world well, wishing you well. Today, saying a prayer. Amen. I'm not going to let this wind me up. Someone, somewhere, is facing something more serious. God help them. And me too, while you're at it. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Thanks for her and for them. For her wise words and their kind smile. Thank you, people. You know who you are. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you. Now let's join together in the Lord's Prayer. Please say together. God, you are life for us. Holy be your name. Your new day come, your will be done on earth as in your vision. Give us this day our bread for the morrow, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Strengthen us in the time of test, and deliver us from evil, for the power and the splendour and the fulfilment are yours, now and forever. Amen. For the next hymn, I wish I could say that it was fitting with our theme, and but you know what, really, I've always just loved this. <laughs> so that's my only uh, excuse or reason, maybe, for including it. So, good C King Wenceslas. Thank you, Joan and Brendan. <laughs> Thank you. 
seated. Thank you. I thought it would be useful to end with a blessing and I picked out some various Bible verses about joy. You can be joyous about many different things, about, well, about material possessions, I guess, about people around you, about uh, good things, about small things, about birds in the sky, about the sunshine, all sorts of things. And the great thing about these verbal vice verses is they talk about joy in all sorts of different ways. So, the whole earth is filled with awe at your wonders, where morning dawns, where, every e where evening fades, you call forth songs of joy. With joy you shall draw water from the wells of salvation. Shout for joy, you heavens. Rejoice, you earth. Burst into song, you mountains. For the Lord comforts his people and will have compassion on his afflicted ones. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, Patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people.